Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 46 and I'm Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is where I like to share my knitting practice and my knitting projects. And there's a fair amount to show you today. It's been quite a wee while since I podcasted last time, I think maybe about three weeks ago. So yeah, in that time I've been to Newcastle to the North East Woolfest and I've been down to Oxford for an astrology summer school. I've been to London <laughs> for a couple of art exhibitions. Uh, so it's been all go. But I knew that I needed to record today because I have a very special announcement to make. But before I get to that point, let me tell you that <laughs> uh, all of the details for all the show notes will be in the description box below. So if you click on a little chevron <laughs> that will open up a description box and you'll see a list of anything that I'm speaking about and links to those things. However, there is also a link to a Patreon page. That Patreon page is free to access for everybody and you can click through there and you'll get slightly more extensive show notes which will include photographs as well, which unfortunately YouTube doesn't give me the functionality for. <laughs> so we have that so you can access all of those things. The other thing is it's also a Ko-Fi link there if you'd like to support the channel. You can absolutely support the channel as well through signing up as a Patreon subscriber and I have lots of different levels and rewards there that you can go and explore. And the last thing is, is that my mailing address is also listed there so if you need to send something you can do it that way. Okay, I think that's all of the admin out of the way. <laughs> uh, so on to, on to the big announcement which is that on Saturday, so I'm going to be re releasing this video. I'm recording it on Tuesday. I'm going to release it on Friday to my patrons who receive 24 hour early access to all my videos. And then on Saturday, it's going to be available for everybody. And on Saturday, that is going to be the release of my first pattern. Uh, I will show it to you. It's called the Gallus Scarf. And this is it here. So it is a long, long, long <laughs> garter stitch scarf, which is knit in short rows, which kind of then creates these beautiful parallelograms. It is a huge amount of fun to knit, uh, but also very soothing because of course it's garter stitch and that's always very enjoyable to meditative to knit. But alongside that, you get to play with color. So you get to, to switch your colours and see how your two colours are playing together and then add a third one in and a fourth and a fifth. So it's a five skein shawl, shawl, five skein scarf. <laughs> I have knitted this first sample here in Holst Super Soft Held Double. So the pattern has all of the meterage listed for this and all the meterage listed for a DK weight option as well. The fringe is optional, <laughs> so I rather like a fringe, but my other two samples, I haven't added fringe. But there we go. This is the Gallus scarf, and it's got a lovely I-cord edging all along the edges, but it's also got an I-cord cast on and an I-cord cast off. Now, if you've never done an I-cord cast on, and you've never done short rows before then don't worry because I do describe it in the pattern and I've also recorded a tutorial as well so you can go and see how I do it. I recorded the tutorial and in both throwing style and picking style so if you are uh, an English style knitter or a continental style knitter then I'm showing you how to do all of those things in both those styles. What I will say, however, <laughs> this is kind of my disclaimer. <laughs> I am a picker. I am I'm not a picker. I am a thrower. <laughs> I'm definitely not a picker. I do um I do continental or I do two-handed knitting for colour work, and I do do some continental knitting when I'm doing brioche, particularly when I'm doing brioche knits. Um, I throw my brioche pearls and I pick my brioche knits. But as a general rule, I am a thrower. And so you will see that in the tutorial because I am a little bit awkward when it comes to doing the picking. So my apologies for that, but I think it will give you an idea 
of how to do some of those techniques that you need in order to be able to create your gala scarf. Now, I will show you what it looks like on, although I will have to say that today is one of the hottest days of our year. And tomorrow, I think, is going to be even hotter. So, <laughs> but here we go. Uh, I'm braving it. I'm braving the heat for you. This is what it looks like on. I'm going to stand up so you can see because it's very long and very fabulous. <laughs> I love these. You can really see the, the beautiful uh, short row shaping to create these beautiful diagonals. So a lot of people when they're looking at this scarf are, um, ha a lot of the questions I've been receiving about it is whether there's seaming involved. There's no seaming involved. Uh, there's also no picking up stitches involved. This is all knitted as one piece. And there's no intarsia. This is all just done through short rows. So there's always something happening basically on every single row, but it's not so intensive that you can't um, really kind of drop in and enjoy the knitting experience as a meditation of hands. And the other thing I would say too is that it's hugely flexible. So you can knit this in various different weights of yarn and various different fibres. It might give you slightly different dimensions and you might need to be a little bit cautious around your, uh, around making sure you've got enough yarn to complete your project. However, you can certainly adapt this pattern pretty easily and you can add like an extra section or remove a section uh, you can knit it wider uh, you can do all kinds of things with it and like i said you can do you can use a variety of different uh, types of yarn so i want to show you my other two samples so this is the sample here that you will see in the pattern and the pattern is available on both Ravelry and on Payhip. So if Ravelry is an issue for you, you have an alternative to purchase from. And I will have a link to a web page that will give you purchasing options and that will be in the description box below. But also if you do go to Ravelry, then hopefully you'll be able to search for Gallus Scarf and that's G-A-L-L-U-S Scarf. Gallus is, I should say, is a Scots word and it can mean a few things depending on, I suppose, the, the region and also on the tone of voice that's used when, when the word is being said, obviously. <laughs> but generally it means kind of brave and a bit audacious. Um, somebody who is probably quite uh, comfortable with taking risks. Uh, somebody who um, tends to have like a bold style and so I thought it'd be quite a fun name for this particular, this particular design because as an accessory, it feels like quite a bold statement. I think these kinds of long scarves are going to be really in over this winter period. And I also know that knitters don't tend to enjoy knitting long scarves. So if there's something that's on trend, but not an enjoyable knit, then that's kind of a bit of a, a, a quandary. It was a, it's a creative challenge that I wanted to try and solve by creating a design that would be both a really enjoyable knit, but would allow you to really access this particular, um, this particular style with this accessory. So you've got these very long scarves, but it's very fun to knit and actually knits up pretty quick. Because like I said, this is deep, this is, kind of a, support, a sport weight, I think, and I've got a DK option as well. Both are knitted on 4.5 millimeter needles, which I think is a US size seven, but I could be wrong. I do have the correct number in the pattern. <laughs> but uh, but yes, it's quite a quick knit, and because it's so, it's so addictive, and you don't really want to put it down because you want to get on to the next color, and then the next color, and then the next colour, <laughs> and then the last colour, <laughs> then um, then yes, it, it does tend to fly off the needles. And my preview knitters have certainly all fed the same information back to me that I had as that matched, mapped onto my knitting experience. So that is the first sample. 
uh, like I said, it's in Holst Super Soft Held Double. My second sample was this one, and if, you, if you've watched The Meaningful Stitch before, then you have seen both that one and this one. And this was knitted in Lammer Muir's Simply Shetland 4-ply, and it's been held double for some of the sections with this fabulous colour here, which is Design of a Decade, in Ginger Twist's Sweet Suri Lace. Now, it is a little bit off gauge, so it's slightly wider, but I did get this whole scarf out of two skeins of the Lammer Muir four ply. And I think two skeins of, of this as well, of the, the Sweet Suri Lace, because I think it's th the Sweet Suri Lace is 300 meters per skein. So I think you would need two skeins for that. Uh, so this is just another variation. So this is a two color variation. And I also really love this one. I, I like this one because it is a little bit broader. And so it does kind of suit more wearing as a wrap or as a shawl. It comes down over the over your arms like this. And it's very lovely and soft. Lammer Muir is a, is a flock of sheep not very far away from here. And so I really love the idea of knitting this because this is a local flock and this is a local dyer. And so it's really kind of representative of the fibre arts that are in my direct environment, in my, in my locale. So I really loved bringing that, those two together in one particular project. When I showed my friend Rebecca Clo of the Korea Bea podcast, she said it's very Oppenheimer, uh, Barbenheimer. <laughs> so we've got the Barbie over here and Oppenheimer over here. So I did wear it when I went to the Barbenheimer uh, double bill. <laughs> that seemed only only fitting. <laughs> but uh, but yes, I really love this particular one. It's a bit lighter, I think, than this other one because it's just, this is just held single, although it is a very lofty yarn. And, uh, and yes, I love the soft fluff of the, of the sweet suri. So that's to give you an idea of what it looks like when we hold some fluffy yarn. I'll bring it a bit closer so you can see some fluffy yarn. And really you could hold fluff with both sides, you know, with both parts. My mum has knitted a really beautiful one. In fact, she's knitted two really beautiful ones. Uh, one, she has used two Zauber balls, two crazy Zauber balls. <laughs> and uh, with for each section, she's then held a different strand of Holst Super Soft, a different colour of Holst Super Soft. Which then really complements one of the shades in the Zauber ball and really um, amplifies that. And then, and it actually looks like, um, it makes me think of Labradorite when I see that one. And the other one, she used two Zauber balls again, but she held a different color of mohair with e for each section. And again, that's incredibly beautiful. Uh, so yes, that, that's some of the ideas of things that you could, you could do to add a little bit of, a little bit of fluff. I also know that Rebecca of the Korea Bea podcast has knitted hers using Camaro Sniff, Sniff Nug, which is a heavier weight yarn, but very, very fluffy. So the effect of that for Rebecca has been a, a massively outsized <laughs> a gallus. It is much, it's off gauge, so it's much broader and much longer but it is super snuggly and super cozy. So like I said, it is quite a flexible pattern um, because you can, you can use the kind of weight of yarn or the, the, the type of fiber that you, want to, that you want to explore and play with. The next one, the third sample is one that you have not seen. And this is the first thing that I want to share with you today that is off my needles. So this is my DK weight sample. And it is the wrong way around. <laughs> this is yarn that I bought from Northeast Wool Fest. I bought it from Lucy Locketland. And this beautiful 
DK, it's called Ultra DK and it's a merino and it's super variegated uh, but I, what I really wanted to show is one of the one of the reasons why I wanted to knit, wanted to design this pattern in particular was because I thought for um, dyers of yarn it would offer a really interesting way to showcase a palette. It would show how colours from one particular dyer could all come together into a beautiful um, demonstration of their of their colours and I just love how this one looks. Again I will try it on but probably not for very long because it is super warm. <laughs> so I love this. It is the, the yarn is so so soft. Each one of these um, colours is a kind of a one-off and they're inspired by the books on the bookshelf um, at Lucy Lockett Land and uh, and they are all of fairy stories and myth myths and children's books and things and I love that that might makes me think of spines on a bookcase so I, I love all of these beautiful colors and how they're all working together it's up and, and again this um, merino is so so soft but I think it also shows how you know in our stash we sometimes accumulate these beautiful skeins and then we don't quite know single skeins and we don't quite know what to do with them and perhaps this is one pattern that would really allow you to you know bring in some of those beautiful skeins and see how they play together with some of those other beautiful skeins you can of course um, use a, a single strand of DK but if you had a beautiful skein of four ply uh, that was 400 meters you could hold it double and uh, and get the get the right uh, yarn weight but uh, so that's that's another that's another option so i think it's a good stash buster and i think it's a good way for uh, a showcase of a, of a color palette whether that's for you know like i say uh, yarn dyers or whether it's for yarn shops that want to they want to put together um kits of particular uh, brands particular commercial or um or small produced mill produced yarns i think it would look really beautiful in different colors of natural yarn um like perhaps from uist uist wool has some really lovely shades um over in the states when i go over for rhinebeck i'm really interested in exploring bare naked wools i think they're called and they have lots of different shades of of natural wool i think it could be a really lovely way to show off different um, different types of fibre that comes from different sheep. So maybe you could have a Merino and then a BFL and then maybe a Shetland. <laughs> you could really explore, you could really go to town with bringing things together and exploring how they, how they work in a, in a garment or in an accessory, sorry. So this, like I said, is the Gallus. I will show you the Balls. These are the balls of yarn that I've got, or the little cakes that I've got left after um, after using them, just to give you an idea of how much they used up. I have written quantities of yarn meterage. Uh, I've added an extra 5% onto the amount that I use to give you a little bit of wiggle room. But like I said, if you move off gauge um, and you're using different yarn, different fibre, then um, I would always err on the side of caution just to make sure that you that you have enough to complete your project. But uh, but yes, there we go. It's now available for you to go and purchase. And if you are in the area in Scotland, uh, there's going to be a launch party at the Scottish Yarn Festival this weekend. So today, which is which you might be seeing this today on a Saturday, uh, I'm going to be there from 11 till 12. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be there on eleven from 11 till 12 as well in the Explorium. And I'm going to have these three samples for you to look at. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have uh, some other versions as well because I've got some preview knitters bringing along their gallus. And I'm going to have, my mum is going to be there. So those two, uh, gala samples that I've just described to you with the Zauber balls, you, you'll be able to see them too. Uh, and I've also got, 
I got printed off these. These are my Moo cards. I love Moo. If you don't know Moo, uh, they are a printing company that creates these lovely little cards. I'm trying to fish one out here. Here they go. Here they are. So I've got these lovely little cards printed here, which have got an image of me wearing my gallus. And on the back, you've got some details and you've also got the QR code that you can use, which will take you directly to the web page that's got the purchasing options. So there we go. That's the gallus. I am super excited about it. It's um, it feels like it's been a long time coming and now it's finally here and it's out in the world and now it gets to live its own life out in the world. So there we go. Good luck. Good luck, Gallus. <laughs> and now I just get to champion it. So that's a, that's a lovely thing about bringing your creativity out into the world is that uh, once you've done the birthing process and, and, uh, and brought it out into, into existence, into tangible form, uh, now it just gets to go on and live its life and we just get to, to sit back and, and cheer it on and rather than standing in front of it and doing it down and saying, oh, what, this little thing, don't pay any attention to this. <laughs> Instead, we get to go, yay, I'm so pleased about this and I'm so, I'm so thrilled to see your version of it. I'm so excited to see what colours you choose. If you are wanting to knit along with other people, then please do join in our Gallus Cal. It's going to be called Get Gallusing Cal. I will write that down at the bottom. And it starts today. We're going to be knitting galluses from today until the 7th of November. The 7th of November is my birthday. <laughs> so we've got a good couple of months to knit up our beautiful galluses and then we get to snuggle up in them all winter long or even give them as gifts because I think these would be really lovely gifts for Christmas or birthdays. Or actually the other thing I thought about was um, when your children are going off to university or off to college, um, I was thinking this would be a re really wonderful package to receive in the mail just as the winters, as just as the weather started to turn and get a little chillier to receive a package with a gallus in the, in the post for them to, to snuggle up in and remind them of home. I thought that would be a really precious gift. So, so there we go, get gallusing. Get Gallus and Cal. We will um, have a hashtag on Instagram. I don't think I'm going to be running it on um, on Ravelry. I think it will just be an Instagram um, knit along. And uh, yes, I can't wait to see, like I say, I can't wait to see what you choose, what colours you choose, what yarns you choose. Um, if you are going to be at the Scottish Yarn Festival, there are a couple of different places that are, a couple of different dyers that are putting together kits. So you'll be able to try out some of those curated uh, color palettes, or indeed you'll be able to purchase any, well, honestly, there's gonna be such an amazing array of options at um, Scottish Yarn Festival this weekend for you to choose from. But equally, if you have, if you wanna go stash diving, there's, um, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of options. And uh, there's also lots of festivals coming up as well. So if you're planning to, to get along to any of those in your local area, then, um, then maybe you'll be able to find some gallus options there too. So there we go. First pattern out in the world. <laughs> Feels, it does feel very gallus. It does feel very audacious, but I'm really excited about it. And I hope you're really excited about it too. So there we go. I realised that I launched straight into that and I haven't drawn a card for us and I haven't even I haven't even prepared a card. So I'm going to go and quickly grab my deck and I'm going to pull a card for us and we'll see what it is. Maybe it'll tell us something about the gallus. OK, so I have gone for Sacred Rebel Oracle by Alana Fairchild, which is one of my favourites. And certainly the Sacred Rebels would have to be described as gallus. So <laughs> that was my that was my thinking for my quick choice there. Let's see which card we get. This is all very on the fly. Oh, restore and replenish. Oh, what a delightful card. Okay, let's have a little look at the guide and see what it says. I will not read everything because these are extensive guides. 
but it says you are in need of something so much deeper than rest. You need restoration, replenishment and revival. This will not necessarily come from lying about somewhere, taking a moment out of your day or evening activities. You're more likely to gain what you need by breaking with your routine completely and doing something different. You need some variety, some spice, some change to bring fresh energy into your body, mind and heart. You need to restore and revive yourself by changing the usual flow of energy through your being. You could stimulate this process by going to a different place, meeting different people and taking different action to what you would usually do. There's lots more, but I will leave it there because I think that change of energy is actually really what's coming in just now uh, with, the, with the change of season. Although I say that and we are actually having our hottest, one of our hottest weeks all summer. Scottish summer has basically been one nice week in June and one nice week in September. And the rest of it in the middle was really pretty chilly and not very, not very summery. <laughs> However, the change of season is really very much upon us. The sun has tr transitioned now into the sign of Virgo. And Virgo has that kind of back to school energy. And I really love that energy. And I will certainly be talking a lot more about that shortly because I've had a lot of learning experiences over the past couple of weeks. And that's led to a real desire for more. So you might similarly be feeling that real change of energy in yourself as well. I'm certainly seeing a lot more um, podcasts talking about fall knitting plans or autumn knitting plans, as we would say on this side of the pond. <laughs> and, uh, and all of these new designs coming out, uh, lots of different yarn brands and, and lines coming through. And it's all really exciting. It's that kind of change change of the guard, you know, change of the seasons that's really inviting in this new uprush of energy that I think really comes in in September. In many ways, I think a lot of us look to this as the beginning of the year rather than in January, particularly, particularly those of us who are accustomed to, to a school or academic year, because generally that would start in September. So maybe you're feeling that as well. So if you are, I'm wondering how that's showing up in your making. Are you feeling the changes? Are you feeling um, restored as it comes to your, to your knitting mojo? <laughs> what are you casting on? What are you getting excited about? Um, is there some new patterns or new projects that you want to, to cast on your needles? The gallus, perhaps, <laughs> or maybe the leaf cardigan that I shared last time from Rebecca, which has now just come out this past weekend. So there are lots of lovely patterns coming out and lots of lovely new trends to, to experience and follow, new colours to go and experiment with, new palettes, new colour combos. So for me, that... that um, invitation to the new in my creativity really sparks and revives me and restores my sense of energy and my desire to make. So so there we go. That's our Sacred Rebel Oracle. We didn't get to that until, until a little bit further through the, the episode than we would usually, but there we go. So my finished objects, the gallus, and uh, that's a big finished object because it's a pattern which lives out in the world now. So... <laughs> The other finished object that I wanted to share with you was this, and I don't think I had finished this last time. No, I absolutely hadn't. I hadn't finished this the last time I, I, I recorded. This is another design of mine now. Um, I haven't written the pattern up. I have, it exists in notes in a notepad. <laughs> Let's hope I wrote proper notes. <laughs> but this is a one skein and I'm, and I'm blowing out terribly trying to show you a black shawl. You can see it's got lots of lots of um, fringing which I just love, lots of bobbles. Now I cast this on just as Venus was going retrograde and we had entered into Mercury retrograde shadow. Now, a retrograde in astrology basically means as though it looks as though the, pa the planet is moving backwards in the sky. But actually, it's all to do with orbits and our own personal perspective here on Earth that makes it look it's like an optical illusion. It's not actually going backwards at all. But really, it becomes then an opportunity for us to review 
uh, remember, uh, rethink about, rethink our choices, um, go back over something in our in our lives in order to be able to see it from a new perspective or to regain some um, some advantage, regain some kind of understanding. Uh, so. I, as I said, I began this during the Venus retrograde, which was really this opportunity to go back over things like how we relate, um, how what do we apply value to, um, how do we experience pleasure, what do we find beautiful, all these kinds of questions um, are raised with a with a Venus retrograde, and so here we have my tangible knitted expression of my Venus retrograde. <laughs> And what I wanted to do was I wanted to add in these bobbles. And this is really kind of a tribute or a, a way of referencing the retrograde because in a retrograde, a planet will look as though it's gone forward and then stopped and then gone backwards and then stopped and then gone forwards again. And that's very much how these bobbles are created. I have created these bobbles by first knitting forwards, then knitting backwards, and then knitting forwards again, and then fastening off the bobble. I don't like to turn my work uh, when I'm doing bobbles, and I don't really like to stop and pick up a crochet hook. I would much rather just continue knitting with my, with my work facing me. And it, so that's exactly how I've done these bobbles. And really, I'm not sure when it's this many bobbles I'm not sure you would want to do something other than that. This has been knitted using Kremke, what's it called? Kremke Jeans Reborn, that's it. And it's the darkest colorway. This is denim. And so it's not actually been dyed at all. This is the, this is the natural color of the denim. And it's 300 meters per 100 gram skein, but it comes out as a wor as worsted weight. Every time, every I, I try and brush over saying that word, and every time it trips me up. Worsted weight, <laughs> and uh, and but it's it's exceptionally good meterage for that. But it does seem to, you know, pretty much fulfil. You can see that the stitches there are very, um, are are quite substantial, um, and they're quite well defined as well because it's mostly um, it's mostly cotton. So I thought this would be a really lovely summer piece. Now it's a crescent kind of shawl, which means that it's, I'm blowing out again, which means that it's longer up here and shorter in the spine. But that means that actually, even with just the one skein, and I will show you, I'll try this on. Now you can either use the length of that with the fringing to tie to tie it on and then it'll stay on like that yeah so that's definitely one way to wear it the other way to wear it is by adding in a shawl pin and this is how I generally wear mine like this and I got this shawl pin from the cocoon tree and you will see more cocoon tree just shortly. <laughs> but there we go, that's generally how I wear mine. And I've been wearing this quite a lot since I've finished knitting it because with the warmer weather, I burn really quite badly when, um, when the, the sun finally decides to show its face. And so I have to be very cautious with using my sunscreen and I like to generally have something which covers up uh, my shoulders um, and, and my chest. And actually this does a really good job of that without being too heavy because obviously it's got the it's got the eyelets and it's this lovely lightweight um cranky yarn. So I've been wearing this quite a lot in this way and I really I'm really really enjoying it. However, I'm also aware that I have designed and knitted this particular shawl uh, and we are in this hemisphere coming up to the colder season, although you wouldn't think it this week, but we are coming up to the colder season. So perhaps I was thinking it's not the best time to launch it. And then I thought, actually, Amy, that is ridiculous because 
for my Southern Hemisphere loves, of which there are many, <laughs> you, of course, are all coming up to your warmer time. You're coming up to your summer period. And why would you not expect and deserve uh, patterns that are um, honouring your seasonal shift, your seasonal change? And so I was thinking, well, maybe I could bring this out in what would be my winter time, but it would be summertime in the Southern Hemisphere. So I was thinking, bring it out then as a one skein shawl in this that lovely cotton uh, plant fibre. And certainly I'm sure there's lots of other plant fibre options uh, that you could explore. And at the same time, bring out a woolier three skein version for the Northern Hemisphere and just as we are moving into our colder months. So in that way, it really allows, uh, allows a pattern to really um, serve not just those of us in the, in the moving into the, the colder climes. So on that note, I will show you what I have done so far of the woolier version of this. And here we go. I am about one and a half skeins or maybe at one and a third skeins into this, but here it is. I've used Nervous Fibre, and this is some um, yarn that I picked up from Charlotte of Nervous Fibre at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase. So it's a beautiful blend of BFL, Blue Face Leicester, and Gotland. And I think this colorway is called Tremble. And it's kind of like a very kind of sort of, would we say mauve? <laughs> we might. <laughs> I think it's a mauve and I think it's kind of got these sort of like rusty little speckles running through it. And so just like this one, we have these rows of eyelets and then we have this uh, row of bobbles and moving into more eyelets. And then I've knitted another garter section and now I'm just about to repeat this section here again here and with the hope that maybe I could get three repeats of this section in but we'll we'll see how far my how far my yarn takes me. So I decided that seeing as my first design was called the gallus and that referenced a Scottish word that perhaps a Scottish word might be a good idea for my next design. So I've decided to call this one a glee. Now, you might be familiar with Robbie Burns. He is our one of our national poets. <laughs> and uh, he brought out, a, he had a poem. Sorry, I'm being distracted by some barking dogs outside the window. I've had to keep the window open today. But, uh, but yes, I'm hoping that you're not being as disturbed by it as I am. <laughs> but yes, the line of poetry is, the best schemes of mice and men gang after glee. And gang after glee means often go awry, yeah? Or often go askew. So a glee means askew or awry if something goes a bit wrong. And I thought that was the perfect, uh, <laughs> the perfect name for a shawl in which particularly this one, many, many things went awry. I've ripped this back several times and re-knitted it and then ripped it back and then re-knitted it. So, um, and actually that's quite often how a retrograde will, an astrological retrograde will, will present. You know, things don't necessarily go as planned. Uh, things that seem to be relatively straightforward become complicated. Uh, things start to come out of left field and we need to we need to adapt we need to work with them in ways that we might not necessarily have anticipated so just as the gallus comes with a blessing really of you know that I hope that it brings you you know a sense of your audaciousness and a sense of you know being able to be bold with your creativity and and um, and really kind of enjoy your personal your personal style uh, this one is coming with a blessing of resilience. And I think, again, that, that seems particularly appropriate for uh, a pattern that's coming out in both kind of a hot weather and a cold weather version. So there we go. This is the Aglae shawl. 
and this is the one skein version. I'll just pop it off my head. <laughs> Quite often I just keep it pinned like that. The other thing I was actually thinking, and I might do this, I'll need to see if I've got a button, but I was thinking what I might do is sew a button onto the wrong side, just at the edge here, and then I could pop it through one of these eyelets and then that would that would also really serve to keep it like this. And I, I really, really enjoy wearing this. I'm not sure whether I'm going to add the fringing to this version. I think you absolutely could, but I think that I might be coming a little bit close to the um to the yardage that I've uh, the meterage that I already have, the three skeins. I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough left over to add a fringe to that one. This one pretty much used up every scrap of my 300 meter skein um, with, the, with the knitting and the fringe, but I do love it. Really pleased with this. And like I say, wear it often, have worn it often already. And I think I will get wear out of this one too, because I think this is gonna be a really beautiful, snuggly uh, pattern, snuggly shawl. You can see the the spine going down and and really as with the the gallus I've tried to put all of my shawl knitting knowledge which is pretty expen extensive if you've seen my shawl wall episodes you'll know that I've knitted a, a lot of shawls so I'm hoping that all of the kind of tricks and um, and the little things that kind of really refine a pattern um, are kind of being brought to bear in my own designs and so um so I've tried to to do that with this with this also but I'm really pleased with how it's knitting up and the garter is very soothing and it's easy to to work on in company so this has become my knit night knitting <laughs> so there we go that is the Aglae shawl it is actually in my cocoon tree bag there we go the the cocoon tree is um a maker called uh, Lorna, Lorna Lancaster, and Lorna is my auntie, and so she very kindly gifted me that beautiful, that beautiful bag. But if you hang around a little bit longer, I will be able to show you um, another bag that that could be coming to you. But we're not quite there yet because I've got one more project that I want to show you. Now, this is my only, other than the Aglae shawl. This is the only other thing that I'm working on right now, and it is my plum. <laughs> I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> In fact, I'm get. I'm really close. Look, I now have one sleeve, so I'm now working on the next sleeve, and I'm almost. Well, I can show you actually. I am up to here. You see these stitch markers. So I'm probably about here. So this is how much more I've got to do. So I've a couple more days of knitting, I think. I'm wondering if I could possibly have it ready by the weekend, but it won't really matter if I've got it ready for the weekend because I will not be wearing it this weekend. Uh, on, the tw on the 9th, so on the Saturday, the first day of, Scot of the Scottish Yarn Festival, in Edinburgh, it's going to be 25 degrees, which is, really warm for here. We are not used to temperatures like that, particularly in September. And uh, and I know that other people are in much, much warmer countries are thinking that's a ridiculous temperature to be, um, to be even mentioning. <laughs> and certainly when I was in Hungary, we had uh, over 40 degrees on some days. So yes, I do know extreme, <laughs> extreme heat. And I know that 25 degrees is not extreme, but it is warm for us. And um, and it wasn't really what I was expecting for for September, and so I am launching this very large, cozy, woolly scarf <laughs> in what is turning out to be one of our warmest periods. And uh, and the other thing, of course, is that um, I'm doing a cal for the for the Scottish Yarn Festival, the Scottish Shrug Club cal. And uh, which you can go and check out the hashtag for that too, and I highly recommend you do. And uh, and yes, so the the plan is is for people to wear their shrugs to the 
to the festival. And it, what I will say is it might be too warm to wear it to the festival, but once you get into the into the Jewers Centre, then I don't imagine it's going to be super warm in the Jewers Centre. It'll be it'll be comfortable, but uh, but yes, maybe you'll be able to pop your pop your shrug on momentarily, particularly seeing as we're going to be having a Cal meetup at. 12 till 1 on both days, the Saturday and the Sunday, with the hope of getting a wee photograph taken of us um, all in our all in our shrugs. So so there's that plan. But yes, I won't be wearing this jumper to the Scottish Arm Festival because it's going to be far, far too warm to do that. Uh, but it would be nice to have it off the needles because it has been on the needles for a good wee while. And I was thinking actually it'd be a really lovely piece to take with me to the States. Uh, when I go over it in October, uh, I will be at both Wool and Folk and I will be at Rhinebeck. At Wool and Folk, uh, Jackie from the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast and I will be participating in the podcaster's patio and I'm really looking forward to that. I think that will be a really lovely experience. So, uh, so yes, we'll see. I hope to see you there if you're if you're planning to go along. And the other thing that at, that's happening at Woolen Folk is that Eva from the Scottish Yarn Festival is going to be going along with Katie from Celia McWheely. And uh, she has asked me and Rebecca if we'll do a Meet the Podcaster, Meet the Scottish Podcaster <laughs> uh, hour at her stall. And so, of course, we both said yes. So if you want to come and meet me, and Rebecca at Woolen Folk, then there will be an option to do that, particularly at the Scottish Yarn Festival booth. So this, that's that's news. <laughs> and then of course we have um, we have uh, Rhinebeck on the Saturday and the Sunday. So maybe I will get an opportunity to wear this to on one of the days that I'm going to be there. But of course we don't know what the weather is going to be like. It might be, again be far too warm to wear something like this. But I will give you the details of it anyway. I know if you've watched The Meaningful Stitch before, um, any of my recent episodes, you've probably seen me mention this um, a few times, but I will just run through it quickly. The yarn is, this beautiful speckly yarn here is from Cowgirl Blues. This uh, yarn here is from Ginger Twist, is Pin Up Sport. This is in the Au Natural. This colourway here is called Under Pressure. It's kind of like a grey gray speckle with little rusty bits. And then this fluffy bit here is Fonte Ombel. And it's a wool mohair. I did try a alpaca silk that I had from um, Hobie but um, the alpaca silk and the superwash merino were not um, were not very good together in colour work. They weren't, the, the stitches were sitting very far apart from one another and they weren't kind of creating a cohesive fabric, which is when I decided then that I would go for the mohair because then that kind of, that longer fibre, I think, uh, helps to, to knit the colour work together a bit better and provide a more cohesive fabric. Uh, so it is, this is the Plum Sweater by Junko Okamoto. It's got a provisional, provisional, that's not right, tubular, tubular cast on, which my mum who has knitted a couple of these recommended um, that you do the provisional really quite tight because otherwise you'll find that it slips off your shoulders a lot and certainly I don't seem, like looking at it just now, it doesn't, and that's it there, and that's the end of, I have slopey shoulders. <laughs> Lots of things slip off my shoulders, but I don't think this will. Um, and then I, the original pattern just has um, the, would just have the one main color and one contrast color, but I didn't have enough of my main color, so that's why I've added in this uh, secondary main colour to create this kind of broad stripe through it. I'm really pleased with how it's working out. Um, I really love the detail and the design of it. Um, so the these uh, cables are followed all the way through. You can just about see it in the variegated yarn all the way down to the cuff. I, as I said, I'm using stitch markers 
I use stitch markers to show where my um, my uh, decreases, that's the word, <laughs> where my decreases are going to be in my sleeve and um, the, on this other side here I was I had a row of these gold markers here and that was showing me when it wasn't a decreased um, row but it was a cable row. Um, I really like to use my stitch markers to help me keep track of decreases increases and um, and any kind of feature that has to happen regularly in a pattern and um, it really stops me then from having to consistently count my rows or keep track of of where I am in a pattern because I can very easily see and then when I'm knitting the second sleeve as soon as I get to that part in the pattern I just transfer the, the stitch marker from this sleeve onto the sleeve that I am now knitting which you can then see here. So that's how I'm that's how I'm working with this and I think the next time that I record you will see this as a finished item. I'm determined this is this is what I want. I want this to be to be completed. So and it will. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm realizing actually that I had one other finished object but I've given it away as a gift, which is why I don't have it to here to show you, but maybe I could show you a little photograph of perhaps as it was knitting as I was knitting it I don't think I even have a photograph of the finished piece <laughs> but um but it was the shrug the Sunday shrug by Jackie Rose I knitted it as part of the Scottish Shrug Club Cal and I gifted it to my son's daughter my son's daughter my son's partner Sonia who came I think if you watched the last episode you'll know that she came over and helped me to organize my stash which was hugely helpful and she found this yarn and really liked it so I decided I was going to knit that and gave it to her for her birthday so so that was my other finished object there's been quite a lot of knitting actually going on <laughs> but yes that's that's everything that's been kind of off the needles or which is currently on the needles and then I've got some things which are new to me and some of it's new to me and some of it's intended for you. So I'll show you what I picked up from the Newcastle North East Wool Fest and I'll talk to you a little bit about that, um, about that event also. It was hosted at the Newcastle Racecourse. It was a wonderful venue, actually a really great venue for a yarn festival. It was very spacious. It had lots of room for sitting and knitting. There was quite a few cafes. There was lots of toilets. I never had to queue once for a ladies' toilet, which is, um, uh, well, as you will probably know, that's a bit of an anomaly. So it had lots of toilets. <laughs> I was very impressed. <laughs> And it had lots of wonderful vendors. So my auntie of the cocoon tree was vending at Northeast Woolfest. And so she had mentioned it to me and asked me if I wanted to go down for it. And I, of course, said yes. And, uh, and I had a wonderful time. It was so lovely to see people who watch the podcast. And if you're one of those who came up and said hi, I really appreciate that. I know that it's sometimes... A little bit awkward to come up to somebody who um who doesn't who doesn't know you and you don't really know them but um but I'm really appreciative of of everybody who who plucks up the courage to come over and and say hi and I hope that you find when you do that that you get a lovely warm response <laughs> and uh, and yes it was so wonderful to meet you and and hear about your purchases and your plans and and, and what you enjoyed about the podcast. So that was that was really very precious. I really enjoyed that. And I also managed to pick up some really lovely, um, lovely treats for myself, which I will show to you now. So the first thing that I bought, and this was from, I think it's the Estonian Knitting Company. And this is some Latvian yarn. Oh, maybe it's a Latvian company then. I'm not sure. They do beautiful mittens. I should really have looked this up. I'm going to pop the information on the screen right now of the name of the company because I should have looked that up before we did this. Never mind. 
my apologies, but I did buy this. <laughs> this was my first purchase. In fact, I think this was my only purchase on the Saturday. The Saturday was really, really busy. In fact, the Saturday had sold out and weekend tickets had sold out, uh, but you could then only purchase a ticket for the Sunday. So the Sunday was definitely quieter, uh, but it was still very, very buzzy. And I think, um, I think it was a really good sale day for the vendors on the Sunday. Uh, so, but I, this is what I bought for myself on the Saturday. This is Latvian wool. It is, so it's 600 meters per 100 grams and I have 180 grams. I'm not going to figure out how much that is off the top of my head. <laughs> so it's quite a substantial amount of yarn. And it's in this gorgeous sort of self-striping. But the sample that they had that was knitted up in this yarn was a modular blanket. So basically they'd knitted um, like the first sort of shade. And then when they got to the second shade, they stopped knitting and then they started to knit. They picked up stitches and knitted in a different direction. And then it's so almost like a log cabin um, construction and they did that with this beautiful self-striping to make this lovely modular blanket and it was really very eye-catching and these are just these are just my happy colors <laughs> so it's lace weight at 600 meters to 100 grams I would say it's definitely on the heavier side of lace weight or even a light fingering weight and it's a hundred percent wool so it's a real woolly wool and it's single ply and it's just a great big cake. It's lovely. I'm really pleased with that. So that was an exciting purchase. The next day, um, I, well, I bought this book here and I got this from um, Dina's House of Crafts. And it was because I'd never seen this one before and it had some really lovely, there you go, here's the, here's the long scarf aesthetic. <laughs> uh, again, here. How cool. So, uh, so yes, uh, it had some pieces in it that I hadn't seen before. A lovely wrap cardigan and um, this beautiful kind of slipover. So it just had a, a number of patterns that I really, really liked. Um, where is the other one? Oh, this is an interesting brioche. Um, which is, oh there it is, that's a good shot of it, which has kind of got this colour change um, done on the diagonal, really interesting shaping around the sleeves. And oh yes, this beautiful cable jumper, which is really spectacular. And a nice pair of, beautiful pair of mittens, with this lovely Oh, I've got fiber up my nose. <laughs> so yes. Oh, and I think this is actually by Dina herself, which is another is beautiful uh, shawl. So I picked this up for myself and it's just really well designed. I really like the aesthetic and uh, yes, I was just very impressed with it. So it's called Radam Magazine for Knitters. And apparently this is the only one that's been translated into English. i um, also got these amazing socks, which as you know, I'm not a sock knitter, but um, I can admire them. These are called sassy socks. <laughs> so, so I picked that up. Uh, my auntie picked this up for me, which is a little kit. And it's three balls of uh, Rico Essentials Organic Cotton in this beautiful soft pink and it came with a little pattern which is, I'll just show you here, which is to knit this this little wrap cardigan uh, for a baby um, and that's because my cousin is expecting so uh, so yes I'm going to be knitting that my auntie is going to be vending at Yarndale uh, so I'll be going down to that in a couple of weeks time. So if you're going to be there, I hope to see you. And uh, and so I'm hoping to have it finished by then so I can give it to her. 
um, still plenty of time before before baby arrives, but it's nice to be it's nice to be all organised. <laughs> I can try anyway, <laughs> but this isn't going to take very long. Baby knits are are pretty quick, so I think I can I think I can finish the plum and then get this little tendu wrap completed. Uh, I should say who's tendu wrap by? Knit one kits. I think that's the only name that I can see. Knit one kits. Dot co dot uk so i'll include the details for that in the show notes and then the other thing that i bought was this skein of fabulous boucle and this is a new to me dyer mamie and flory they um this is yarn inspired by places and each one of their colorways is named after like the three words that you use to designate a particular place so this one is in the sixth Paris arrondissement and it's three words are fakes, absorbs, apple. There you go. <laughs> and look at this colour. <gasps> I just couldn't resist. I just had to bring it home with me. Uh, Amy of Mamie and Flory was uh, such a delight. It was so lovely to get to know her a little bit and to meet her. She will also be at Yarndale highly recommend you go and check her yarn out. Her mohairs are just to die for, just divine. And she had quite a few different colorways in the in the boucle as well. I'm almost tempted to buy another couple of skeins of the boucle and to knit myself another leaf using this gorgeous variegated boucle, maybe matched with a solid um, DK in like that lilac color. I think that would, or maybe even in the green or the orange. So many choices. Anyway, that's, um, I'm definitely going to be checking out Mamie and Flory's stall at Yarndale. And uh, I, I was so pleased with this uh, skein that when I got to the train station to go catch my train back up to Edinburgh, uh, I, was, I was there a little bit early. And so I went to the bar and the pub at the, at the station and had a, a small glass of rosé and I sat and I took my <laughs> I took my skein out and laid it beside me and admired it while I sipped on my wine. <laughs> Nobody else date their skeins? No, just me. <laughs> it just makes me really happy so uh, I think I went back and picked this skein up multiple times across the weekend until I thought oh for goodness sake Amy just just buy it already. <laughs> It is more or less yours now anyway. <laughs> Your soul has men has melded with it. <laughs> Just take it home. So so yes, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, and I think it's really lovely. In fact, Amy was saying that um, I think there's going to be a pattern release that, um, that uh, coincides with Yarndale and it will feature one skein of boucle. So um, I'm very interested to see that that design and um, possibly knit that with my with my single skein. Either that or I will have to buy some more. <laughs> the only other thing that I bought at, or things that I bought at, um, I was going to say Yarndale, at North East Wool are for you. Now, I was just realising when I was out for coffee with Rebecca earlier today that um, on the 29th, 29th? 29th of August was the third podiversary of The Meaningful Stitch. How fabulous is that? We've been going for three years so that we are now entering into our fourth year, which feels truly astonishing. Um, I'm so grateful to everybody that's been along on this journey for with me. Uh, we're also at just over 12,000 subscribers. I don't generally mention the numbers of subscribers because, to be honest, they don't really, it, that number does, and numbers don't interest me. Uh, people do. And our engagement matters to me. Our conversations matter to me. Our interactions and encounters and our community matters to me much more than you know, whether we've hit the heady heights of 12,000 or more subscribers. But it's still quite a marker to, to know that there are, that our community has grown in this way over those three years. Um, I had already planned uh, a little, a little prize for you. 
I had, so, I, like I said, I had bought some things for you from Northeast Wool Fest. My plan is to do the same thing at Perth at Scottish Yarn Festival and to do the same thing again at uh, Yarndale. So if you would like to participate in this, uh, then I would like you to tell me something about um, your experience of the Meaningful Stitch, to, just to coincide with this with this uh, third anniversary, uh, this third podiversary, <laughs> is um, is what you what you think about the meaningful stitch? You know what 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 do you love about it? What has brought you joy? Has it inspired something um, that you've then cast on? Um, has it influenced the way that you think about your making and about your and about your life? Um, I would love to hear. I would love to hear that. So. If you would like to, to enter in, then please leave a comment. Make sure that you are subscribed. Also give this, this video a wee like as well. That would, be, that would be very appreciated. But yes, please make sure you're a subscriber, that you've left a wee comment, and then I will add you into the draw and I will let you know next time. Um, as always, and I need to say this because obviously we've had issues in the past with scammers, but I will not then go back into the comments and tell you that you have won, okay? If you have won a prize, I will tell you that in the next episode and you will see it in the description box, yeah? You'll see it written underneath that video. You will not hear from me in the comments um, with regards to whether you have won a prize. You do not have to send me, you know, money um, or... <laughs> Um, or lots of lots of details or anything like that. Um, it will be up to you to get in touch with me after you hear your name in next in the next episode if you have won. Okay, so just to make sure that we all stay as safe as possible, we really just have to be a bit savvy, I think, which is sad, but it's just um, it's just the way of things, isn't it? That we just have to be a bit savvy and a bit responsible for the way in which we choose to show up in our online environments and making sure that we're taking care not to give our information out to, to people who might use it in, in nefarious ways. So, so yes, something to be aware of, but I will show you what I bought and then you can see. In fact, the first thing isn't actually something I bought, it was something I was given to give to you, which is this beautiful project bag and I'm going to leave it inside the plastic so it stays all beautiful and safe. Um, but it, trust me, it's got a lovely lining as well. Um, this is a cocoon tree bag. This is, let me see, where is my bag to give you context? So it's a little bit smaller than this one. So, but it would be perfect for like a one skein project. So if you're a sock knitter, then this would be an absolute ideal size bag for you. Um, so there we go, that's a beautiful cocoon tree bag. Um, I picked up, oh yes, this Snuggly Stars yarn. I got a beautiful pin for you, which I thought went really nicely with the, with the bag. And then I bought these gorgeous little mini balls. And these are DK weight and they're from Wensleydale Long Wool. So these are single breed, um, breed specific uh, yarns and I got these colors these are 20 gram minis aren't they lovely and I will just show you the gorgeous halo on them and they are really soft um this one's aubergine this one's moonlight this one is lime sherbets uh this one is teal and this last one is Wild Time. So I really love those together. So there you go. You've got that and you've got the beautiful project bag and you have a nice pin. So like I said, that's a lovely prize and um, I will enter everybody who leaves a comment below and uh, I will let you know next time uh, who has won um, and I will share that in the episode and not in the comments, okay? I also got this really lovely card to include in with it. There was these amazing um, needle felters, and this is one of the this is one of her cards from her projects. So that is what I bought at Northeast Woolfest. 
but it's not actually all that's new to me. So hang on a second, I've realized I've left something else. I'll be back. Hi. <laughs> so yesterday we had a yarn swap event at my knit night. I will show you a little photograph of what the table looked like before we all dived in. Um, but it was alarmingly full. <laughs> it was a bit of a mountain of yarn. Uh, the wonderful um, Rebecca, who is re-knitting on Instagram, and we've got, I think we've got three Rebeccas at our knit night, uh, but she did a wonderful merchandising effort and kind of grouped everything into colour, so it was a little bit easier to, to kind of navigate and, and see if there was anything there that we wanted to, to go home with. But basically we had all gone through our stashes and taken out any skeins or anything, any cones or balls of wool that we were either left over from other projects or that we'd bought and now no longer wished to use. And uh, so that was, yes, yeah, so that was arranged a wee while ago. And so it happened last night. This is our second wool uh, swap that we've ever done. And uh, it is chaotic. <laughs> Uh, but we, I think we all left with lots of gems. And so I want to show you what I left with. So I left with quite a few cones. So one of the cones I left with was this one here, which is the Merino wool from Wooly Knit. And it's in this kind of, I don't think it's got, I don't think it's got the colorway, does it? Oh, it does. It's called Bureau, B-U-R-R-O, Burrow. I think of it as more kind of like a mink, kind of like a mink brown, so it's like got sort of grey tones to it. Or like a milk chocolate, perhaps. So yes, I, I rather like this. So I got that, and I got this cone of, um, and this is Venetian, um, the colour of Venetian is Holst Super Soft. And I'm pretty sure this is from Rebecca Clo. Uh, because she bought some super soft and then um, didn't really enjoy the feel of it when she was knitting with it. Um, the feel of um, whole super soft is quite crisp. Um, it does still have its spinning oil in it and it has uh, excess dye as well. I've never really found the dye has come off my hands apart from on Holst super soft slow. And that was the one which you might remember I was actually allergic to, but that's the only one actually that's kind of the colours transferred onto my hands. Um, but I think it is it perhaps an acquired taste, but when you wash and block it, it blooms and softens so beautifully. It is a 50% Merino, 50% Shetland blend, and so you would expect it to be soft. Although perhaps not um, super, super soft, um, if what you're more used to is uh, is merino or cashmere or um, well, lucky you if you're more used to cashmere that's all I'm saying <laughs> but um but yes I do really love super soft I knit quite a lot with this this is a color that would look amazing on my daughter so I'm quite tempted to see if she would like uh she would like a jumper in this color because I could totally see her in this uh, and then I got another couple of cones in here, I think. Oh, I'll show you what I've got before I get to that. I've got these two Einrum, which is Icelandic wool and Thai silk. Uh, it is 50 grams for 86 meters, so it's quite chunky. Um, made in Iceland at Eastex for Einrum. And Eastex, of course, are those, uh, is the mill that makes Lopi. So it's like lopi, but it's got this Thai silk plied through it. Uh, so I have two, I have two skeins of that. I have one skein of this Regia lace, and it's kind of you can see it's all these kind of different colours, and it is seventy one percent new wool, twenty nine percent polyamide. It's a hundred grams, and it's six hundred meters. So not quite sure what I'm going to do with that, but that was kind of like a a late pickup. Uh, once once most things had gone, I went back over and had a little look to see what was still there, and this is what I this is what I've ended up coming home with. I think that also happened with this too, which is the soft alpaca lace. I quite like 
a, a lay sweet alpaca to hold with um, with other yarns. And to that end, I've also got four of these, which is Holstitikaka in the colorway Ecru. So I think I've got four of these. Yes, I've got four of these. So these are all pretty much the same sort of base. They're all 100% alpaca lay sweet. So I've got that and then I picked up some brushed alpaca silk from Drops and these lovely soft kind of pink colours and this strong sort of merlot shade. Um, I've got these which is five balls of um, kid silk from Drops in this fabulous red colour. So maybe maybe I could hold that with, with these for, for a nice jumper. We'll see. And then I've got two cones. Uh, one is this, which is kind of an oatmeal colour. What's it called? Oatmeal. <laughs> Funny then. So this is oatmeal. <laughs> this is whole super soft in oatmeal. And this is whole super soft in flannel grey. So I've got a couple of neutrals, which I think I could really play off um, some of my, my brighter shades and um, and I think it kind of showcase the, them on a more neutral background. So that's that's what I picked up in the yarn swap. So I think it was a, a pretty good a pretty good haul. Um really pleased with, with what I got. Uh, there is one last purchase and that is this. I picked this up at Oxford Yarn Store. So, which kind of takes me into what's been bringing me joy because I was down in Oxford for the Faculty of Astrological Studies Summer School. Uh, it's something that I booked back in March and uh, it's something that uh, has, it felt as though it was really going to push me outside of my comfort zone and it certainly did do that, but in very positive ways and in ways in which I really felt and feel that I needed. Um, it was hosted at Exeter College in Oxford, which is one of the oldest colleges, and I got to stay on in the, in the college itself. So every morning I would look out of my bedroom window and would look out onto the chapel outside um, in, the, in, the, in the college. It was just absolutely stunning, stunningly beautiful. And then we would have our meals in this amazing dining hall. I really did feel at certain points that actually I was just at school at Hogwarts where I'd gone to learn about magic and stars. <laughs> but um, but yes, it was also very academic and very um, very rooted in, in research and in psychology and um, in various different approaches. I was really diving deeply into different astrological techniques that we can use um, and I use a lot of astrology in my work um, so that was that was really fascinating for me and it was really lovely to be around people who spoke uh, who spoke astrology you know it's really like a language and uh, and that you don't have to then preface it for people that don't understand it you're able just to to go straight in and that was that was really unusual <laughs> and it was really enjoyable the whole week was really fabulous, but it was very intense. Uh, so I was very grateful then on the Wednesday afternoon that we had a free afternoon. And so I took advantage of that to go for a wee wonder and I discovered the Oxford Yarn Store. In fact, on the way to the Oxford Yarn Store, I passed a sign called uh, for the secret garden, which I will tell you more about in a second. But this is what I bought at the Oxford yarn store and that's not because they didn't have lots of lovely yarn they absolutely did it's because I had limited luggage space <laughs> so I didn't purchase any yarn but I did buy myself this and it's because I hadn't seen this before and it had some really amazing designs in it that I really different things that I hadn't really seen like this which I think are absolutely fascinating and really beautiful. Uh, the, let me see, look at this. Try not to show, show off the pattern. Combining knit with crochet. So it's nine beautiful knit designs. It's produced by Knit Is Air. And I think 
they basically supported knitwear designers. This book represents a collaboration between nine yarn-loving creative co-workers associated with the Azair company. And so um, this is the book that they've decided to put together that's really allowed them to be quite creative in their in their explorations with what's possible with with yarn. I really like this one. Like, look at that. Look at those sleeves. So I just thought it was really funky and really different and I hadn't seen anything like that before. So I decided that that's what I would take home with me from the Oxford Yarn Store. And as for the secret, uh, the secret garden, uh, as I was walking away from the, the yarn store, I popped in and asked if it would be okay if I could sit in their garden and have a cold drink because it was really very, very warm down there. And they said, of course. And they brought me in and they sat me next to the fountain and they brought me a lovely elderflower press, uh, which was homemade and it kind of tasted like a non-alcoholic mojito. And I sat and knitted on my agle shawl for about an hour and a half. And it was exactly the amount of processing and decompressing that I needed. Uh, so then when I went back to went back to Exeter College, I was ready to absorb even more information than I already had. Uh, that little Mediterranean restaurant with the secret garden is called G's, and it is literally just around the corner from the Oxford Yarn Store. Uh, so if you are going to, to go on a little trip to the Oxford Yarn Store, and I recommend that you do, then you might want to pop in there as well. So that was uh, an immense uh, week for me and at the end of it I decided that I was going to um, study the do distance online learning for the for the modules. So that's going to be really interesting because it's going to mean I'm going back to the very basics of, of astrology and uh, despite it being something that I've been studying independent, pretty much independently and supported by um, my astrology mentor Kathleen Prophet um, for the last 10 years or so, 12 years even. So yes, it's going to, to mean entering into beginner's mind and uh, and going back over things and, and trying to see them from new angles and new perspectives. So I'm really looking forward to that. So it's that my new class uh, on that starts at the end of this month and I get to go back and, and be a student again and I'm really excited about that. So, so that's what's bringing me joy. Something else that's been bringing me joy is the wonderful art exhibitions that I've been going to recently. So before I went down to London, I met up with my friend Jen and we went to, I think it's called 200, year, or five, is it 200 Years of Women Artists, Scottish Women Artists at the Dovecot. Uh, and we had a wee wander around there and that was interesting, although it, I felt a little bit... Um, disjointed. I was I was kind of struggling to find the sort of the through line, the narrative, I suppose, that that takes you through an exhibition. Um, whereas we then went on to the exhibition, which is currently at the National Museum of Scotland in Chambers Street, which is literally just along the road from the Dovecot. And I highly recommend that you go to this if you are in the area. It's called Beyond the Little Black Dress. Uh, I, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, so many different designs uh, from the catwalk and uh, from from some amazing designers and from different points in history as well. And it really kind of followed the development of the black dress um, and its iconography within current and past society and culture. Uh, I really, really loved it. And the the little video that you watch at the very, very end, I found incredibly moving, actually, and it had me in tears. I was so profoundly moved by it. So if you can, then I would really recommend that you go along to that. And then we were over in uh, London after my Oxford uh, summer school experience. My husband came down and met me on the Friday in London and we spent the weekend there and I had bought, I had booked and bought tickets. I'm very glad we did because I don't think tickets were available on the door. Um, but we bought tickets for the Rossettis at Tate Britain. I really love the Pre-Raphaelites. It was one of the sort of periods of, of art and literature that I studied at university and um, felt very moved by and met by. 
and uh, so any opportunity that I have really to see something which is pre-Raphaelite related, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and this really focused in on Dante Gabriel Rossetti and Christina Rossetti, but also um, their, their brother and sister were also mentioned in the, the course of the, the, the exhibition. But really it mostly focused in on in Dante Gabriel and, and Christina. And it had a beautiful selection of paintings, of poetry and uh, drawings and uh, it was and the the narrative that they told as you moved around the space was was very well managed and I really really enjoyed that so that was a real gift and then on the Sunday we had bought tickets to see Diva at the v &E, the Victoria and Albert I had never been to the Victoria and Albert in London before I'd been to the v &E in Dundee uh, but I hadn't been to the one in London, and I so enjoyed it. What a beautiful building. Uh, I have, I think I've recommended the TV show called Behind the Scenes at the Museum, which is a BBC production that, that focuses on conservation and curation at the v &E. And so I was familiar with some of the exhibits and some of the spaces uh, because I love that programme so much. Uh, so it was really fun to see them and that space in person. And then the, uh, the exhibition itself, Diva, was all about female performance. And, uh, and they had amazing um, costumes and uh, stories and items relating to, to various different divas from the past and from the present. So that was fantastic. It really was worth the price of admission and uh, and yeah my, even I was I wondered whether my husband would enjoy it quite as much as I did and he, and he did so it was it was worth going to really liked it uh, while we were down in London we had some lovely meals we went to um, La Rille de Valise is that right no that doesn't sound right L'Entrecot um, so L'Entrecot in um, Bordeaux has a variety of different uh, branches and they've got one in London, uh, so in Marlebone. So we went to that on the Sunday. Um, on the Saturday we went to a lovely wine bar and had charcuterie and uh, some nice glasses of wine. And on the Friday we went back to Niche in Islington, which is a wonderful restaurant that does uh, gluten-free food. So that was our lovely eating experiences and then came back home again. So it was really full, really exhausting. <laughs> By the time we finally got home, I was really, really tired from the week before and then all the weekends walking and um, and culture um, enjoying. <laughs> so it was just it was just really, really full on, but fabulous. Uh, but had ne but needed some time to to restore and recover and I'm going back to my going back to the card that I drew. <laughs> so yes, that's what's been bringing me joy. Alongside that, I've been reading a wonderful book called The Mercies by uh, Kieran Millwood. No, oh, what's it? Kieran Harwood Millie, I think it is. I will I will write this in the show notes. But the Mercies is a, a wonderful, really interesting story um, set in the far north in a small village uh, where almost all the men are wiped out um, in, a, in a storm because there's they're, a fishing disaster. And that basically then just leaves the women to manage themselves within their, within their village in Ovarda. And um, and yes, I really I'm really enjoying it. I'm not, I'm not finished it yet, but um, but it's a wonderful read. And movie and film wise, well, it's really only film wise. We finished Shetland uh, on the BBC. I've been really enjoying that. And then once that was finished, we started watching Only Murders in the Building. We had watched the first season already. So now we've just started the second season. And the last thing we started watching was The Bear, when we were, I think we're a lot behind everybody else that's cottoned on to how wonderful The Bear is. I actually find it very stressful to watch, so um, I, it's only half an hour episodes, but they're very full on. And so I kind of have to limit how much I watch of it because I feel very kind of, I feel my nervous system really gets triggered by it because it's very fast paced and 
um, yeah, very stressful. <laughs> stressful working in the kitchen, I think. So yes, that's what we've been watching and that's what I've been knitting and I think that's basically everything, my loves. I don't have a poem or a reading for you this time. Um, I'm not apparently as prepared as I, as I thought I was. <laughs> but I, I do hope that you have enjoyed watching. I do hope that you enter in for the prize by leaving a comment telling me um, what the Meaningful Stitch means for you. And uh, like I said, make sure you're subscribed and I'll enter you in for that. I will not leave a comment on, leave a reply on your comment to tell you if you've won or not. It will be in the next episode. And yeah, the gallus. Go, go for it. Go and um, purchase it. Cast it on. And um, let me know what, what you're going to, what, what colours you're going to choose for it, what yarn you're going to make with it. Um, pop your project up on up on Ravelry so I can see it. I would absolutely love that. And obviously, if you are going to share it on um, Instagram, then just use the hashtag Gallus Scarf. And if you're going to join in with the Cal, get Gallus and Cal. I think that's everything, my loves. Maybe I will be seeing you this weekend. Maybe I'll be seeing you at Yarndale. Maybe I'll be seeing you uh, next month in, in the States. But... Um, I certainly hope to be seeing you in the next episode of The Meaningful Stitch uh, in a few weeks' time. So take good care, happy knitting, and I will speak to you really soon.